Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. This is Glazer of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. We have two great decks for you. We have Lambie's Nico Thanos and the best Nico Phoenix I could find. We're going to go over both of those decks, how to play them, and card replacements for you. That's what we do every weekday on the channel. I'm going to invite you to subscribe. It really helps us out. It's completely free to you. If you're willing, ring that bell, like, comment, help us grow, help us expand our reach. We've got three huge pieces of content for you today. We've got this later on today in about two hours, Snap Judgments podcast on Marvel Snap Zone with Educated Collins and Call Me Sal comes out where we go over the top 10 sleeper decks. And then later this afternoon, tonight, um, as soon as it drops, as soon, we will have an OTA video for you. You're not going to want to miss it. Make sure you sub. In addition, we're trying to help out one of our buddies for his birthday. So it is our friend Wolver Snap's birthday. We are giving away a magic bundle to one of his subscribers. All you have to do is go to youtube.com slash Wolversnap, follow and say happy birthday on his Nico gameplay video. That video is already up. All you have to do is go comment that video. You'll be entered to win magic's birthday party just for that if you're interested in winning that please go check it out i think you'll really like his content we do our best to do deck credits here this deck today is from lamby lamby is probably the best player in all of marvel snap you've likely heard me say that before and safety blade is a deck building genius they both came up with a thanos deck that is one card apart the lamby thanos and the safety thanos are one card apart i'll tell you what that card is um that suggests to me it's probably the right build since I came up with this independently. We also have, okay, so this isn't actually a Homeboy Maxwell deck. We're going to look at the Homeboy Maxwell deck, but Homeboy Maxwell's deck inspired me to like go find the best version of the deck, so that's what we're going to do. Also, don't forget the Marvel Snap Zone YouTube. The podcast will be out later. I'll have an article up there tomorrow. Don't forget to check out Marvel Snapcast. That's a fantastic podcast with Top 5 Sino and Super Tech God that um I was on last week and had a blast with. And, of course, we've got Wolversnap for that giveaway. Our first deck, this is Lamby Thanos. Nico is, um, and KM said this, and I think it's the perfect way to put it, so I'm stealing the crap out of it. Yes, I cited, so I'm not stealing. I am uh, giving him proper credit. Nico is the extra Infinity Stone. Nico's abilities as an, um, fundamentally allow... You like there's no real downside to almost anything she does with the stones, and so she's just extraordinarily powerful. That draw two is completely busted. That put a card extra card in your hand is insane, especially if it's like a Nico or a Devil Dino. Um, or sorry, excuse me, an Elsa or a Devil Dino. Even the plus two power isn't crazy. Um, turn a stone after it has its effect into a demon at plus like five power for some of those stones. That's nuts. There is an awful lot to like in Nico's kit for um, the stones for Thanos. So she, this is one of, if not her best home immediately. Elsa's obviously the meta's card. It, she's the best card in the game right now. She needs to be in every deck she can. She's especially in Thanos, which has no problem filling up late. Psylocke and the Time Stone are here to ramp out an early five. You'll note a paucity of fours. Jeff is great with Elsa. It's also great with Professor X, so it is a stellar card in this deck. Vision is amazing with Elsa um, and also hard counters Alioth pretty well. Meanwhile, you have Professor X, so you can close off a lane, so as long as you can maintain priority, Alioth is backbreaking for you. Blue Marvel gives you reach. Devil Dino gives you an extra big thing to play, and that's the deck. Thanos and Elsa have no substitution. You have to have Thanos and Elsa. Jeff and Nico can be changed. I don't love any of these changes. I think the deck is slightly worse. Um, Jeff and Nico can be Echo. Um, the latest Lambie version had Echo in where Nico was. Nico's better, so Nico went in. We have Mobius, um, Daredevil, or Nightcrawler in that Jeff spot. There is some um, argument that... Oh, excuse me. The argument, the change... Let's go back quickly. The change between safety's list and... Um, Lambie's list is Lambie always runs American Thanos. He does not want to do the I draw all my high cost stuff. While safety just runs an extra two, he runs Mobius. Cool. Feel free to do that as you will. Um, and Alioth can be leader just fine. Uh, I thought it wouldn't work, but.
bunch of people in the comments tried it out when I suggested it. And they're like, no, 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 it works totally fine if Aliath is just leader. So it's a little awkward with deck space stuff, but otherwise pretty good. Sorry, board space. All right, uh, Lambian Safety are one card different. And uh, KM runs Iron Lad in the Shang-Chi spot. So all three of them, which are literally all three top 30-ish level players in the game, have one card different. So that's just nuts. Like, this is probably just the right build. There is some argument that that Mobius America spot um, belongs as Daredevil. So fit that as you will. Turn one, draw stones if humanly possible. You can always Nico whenever you have extra energy and there's an ability you want. So if you had Nico and it was like, destroy the next card you play to draw two, that would actually take priority even over Mind Stone, which is unbelievably rare for Thanos, but it's true. Uh, turn two, Elsa is your priority almost always, unless you played the destroy thing. Um, getting Elsa down and like snapping, smart opponents should often run. If they don't have Elsa and you have Elsa, you're just getting a cube. And climbing a cube at a time isn't like the best thing in the world, but it's also extremely consistent because this is a high win rate deck anyway. Elsa is better than draw stones, which is better than Jeff, which is to me better than the other stones. Um, turn three, Psylocke and Time Stone, and then you go in the same order as two. Turn four, if you can play a five, Professor X is better than Vision, is better than Blue Marvel, is better than Devil Dino. Can't play a five, you're just reverting to your turn uh, three and two play orders. Turn five, Professor X is Vision, and how Dino is better than Blue Marvel. The reason that we don't want um, Dino on four, if we can avoid it, is there's two cards that wreck Dino. Shang chi and Rogue, and both are enough in the meta that, like, it's upsetting. Blue Marvel, um, you're taking a chance, right? You're taking a chance if they rogue it. That's why it's further down the list than Vision. You're taking a chance to get it roguet, but you're not putting yourself in um, Shang chi range, so, like, you have less danger. By turn five, you just kind of have to go for it if you're going to go for it. If they have one and can get you, pay attention to their snaps and how fast they snap when they see that dino. Turn six, Alioth, or Shang and Jeff, or Thanos, Dino, and Dino, and like a Mind Stone or Dino, and a lately drawn space or time stone is usually pretty damn good. All good? Let's keep it going. Let's look at the variants. So um, I had a choice of which of the three Nico variants I wanted, either the Night Forged or the... Um, What's it called? I don't actually remember what it's called. Um, whatever, the one that's in everyone's shop. I chose this one. I really like the Midnight Suns variant. I love the color scheme. This feels very magic to, sorry, very Nico to me. Very magic. Very Nico to me. I'm perfectly happy to have it. We've got a solid hip count of four here. Four is our minimum hips for us to be happy with the deck. We've got Elsa, Jeff, Blue Marvel, and Alioth um, as our hips. Still need a Psylocke variant. I'm down to 18 cards now that I don't have variants for. Psylocke is one Sag. Uh, this is my favorite Chunk chi I have it gold. I love Cozy Devil Dino. I also have Mech, but I like Cozy better. I love this Professor X. I love the Magneto. I love his giant stupid helmet. I like the Krakoa tree. I'm all about this one. Um, I don't love this vision, and I think the art is great. I don't like white vision very much. Don't know why, just don't. America Chavez punching things is awesome, and this is the best Thanos. I have it gold with a purple crack. Next up, this is the deck Homeboy Maxwell made a video on. Um, I strongly urge you, urge you to check out Homeboy Maxwell's YouTube channel. He is a brilliant, brilliant player. He's like, he rocks with this deck, and this deck does not have a high win percentage. That's why we're not covering it. But like, if you watch him play it... Um, I don't believe gameplay really makes players better as a general rule, but I think the way he talks through, particularly his last turns, his last turns take like triple the time of everything else as he like works through different iterations of what to do is exactly the type of thing you need if you're going to get quality gameplay. So I urge you to check out Homeboy Maxwell's video on this deck. I think it will make you better at playing Phoenix Force decks. We're not going to really talk about his deck. We're instead going to look at the one that has a 61% win rate. Only 60 games. 61% is pretty damn good. So y'all should know this by now. If you've been here before, I love Phoenix Force. So I'm sort of always on the lookout for Phoenix Force decks. Well, this is a Phoenix Force deck, so you'll never guess how quickly I ran and played it. And I won a bunch. So that was really nice. Um, I did draw Phoenix a fair amount on four. Like, that is the caveat to my I won a lot statement. 
I drew either Deadpool or Phoenix in almost every game, but when I did, I was just rolling. So that's pretty good. Um, this is going to be weak. Fair warning to Shadow King. Little weak to Shang. Not amazingly, but like actively weak to Shadow King. So be ready. You're gonna have to like play around them and spend that Maxwell amount of time on the last thing. Also, note. Um, see, I used different variants for like half these cards. Because I have two different human torches. The one in the Maxwell one is better. I have three different Deadpools. I don't know which I like better. Um I have two different Venoms. I think the Jacinto one is just better. I, I love both Deathlocks. I managed to not put in a Hulk Buster variant because I suck sometimes. And I, it's a toss-up between both the Americas and the Taskmasters. And, like, the Hip Phoenix Force is kind of ugly, but, like, I love Dan Hip Art, and the other Phoenix Force is glorious. So, you know, Hip versus not Hip. Rough. Let's go. You need Phoenix Force. Nico can kind of be Ghost Spider without, like, this deck completely breaking. Nico is very good, but Phoenix for um, but Ghost Spider is great, and everything else here is low series. Which is to say, if you want Phoenix Force and Nico, and you have the spotlight caches or are willing to spend to get the spotlight caches, you can make this deck tomorrow. And again, sixty per sixty one percent win rate. All right. Um, turn one is generally Forge. As always, you sort of drop um, Nico whenever you can, whenever you have energy and the effect is right. Right. Turn one is Forge, and then you want a multiple man torture Deadpool. If you can eat any of those next, you do so. If you eat it with Carnage, then immediately play Iron Fist, please. Because if you get Phoenix Force, creating Phoenix Force and immediately punching it to the left seems pretty damn good. Uh, same thing would be Nico if she has her turn right. If you don't have Phoenix Force, what you want to play is then Deadpool and Hulkbuster. Because then even one Deadpool kill is going to make him, what, uh, 12 power? And if you'd killed him a time or two before, he's at 14 or 16 which is just pretty damn good. If you've got Phoenix, you move Phoenix. Um, then you want to eat the lane that doesn't have as much of the important stuff as possible with Venom. Cool. You've got one, like, I ate a bunch of stuff, that Deadpool, a whole bunch of other stuff with Venom, and then you want to Taskmaster that Venom and then keep Phoenix moving. If you've got the extra energy, you play Deadpool once in a while. You don't see Taskmaster. And... Nine power from America is perfectly fine on that last turn as a general rule. Um, if Deadpool's bigger, then play Deadpool and whatever other junk you have around. It ends up working out really, really upsettingly well. Um, it's also worth noting that um, let's say you have multiple men in a lane, right? I, this hasn't happened for me yet, but I know it works. You have multiple men in a lane. It's turn four. Um, you can play Iron Fist and Hulkbuster in that multiple man lane. Hulkbuster will attach to the multiple men and then get punched sideways. So you're going to get that eight power in two lanes that way. Same thing works, obviously, with Nico's right turn. But those are the only two move cards, so like that's a fringe thing to do. Same basic idea for Human Torch, by the way. Um, but you don't want to play Iron Fist on one as a general rule. You're trying to use him to get something bigger. Although there are times when you play him on one and then you Human Torch on two, right? It's not a terrible play. Okay, that's this deck. I think this deck is freaking great. It's super fun. It's my, honestly, third favorite Phoenix Force deck um, because I'm in love with the Nimrod versions, honestly. But this is um, really been a little bit more consistent. You have to be wary of Killmonger. If your meta is uh, Killmonger heavy, I took this into gold. I won a couple games, and then I placed, played an opponent who had Shadow King, Killmonger, and Absorbing Man, and that was hard, so I lost. But otherwise, it's super cool. Um, let's do a quick variant talk here. We are super sad. The only thing we even have the option to hip here is Phoenix Force. And I think this variant is just better. Um, I like Taco Deadpool. I like I Will Merc for Food Deadpool. And I like the uh, Penny Arcade Deadpool. No sad Deadpools. Sad I got this Human Torch. I like the other one better. Although it is cool for Series 3 and Complete players. They get early access to Torch. So I feel less upset about it because of that. Um... This Deathlock is very cool. This Venom, I mean, it feels like the beginning of Batman the Animated Series, and I'm all about that. Best America. Uh, McKelvey is a phenomenal artist. I like this Taskmaster fine. It doesn't feel like the most Taskmaster of Taskmasters. I don't like think of him with guns as a rule, but what are you going to do? Uh, Iron Fist is unbelievably ugly, but it's the only variant I have, so I'm a roll with it. And obviously, um, Carnage, multiple men are perfectly fine. I like that Carnage. I usually run it with the Jacinto Venom. It makes me happy that they're combined. All right. 
let's do some more variant stuff. This is my shop for today. You can see that I did not buy the Nico in the uh the Nico on the right. I chose instead the uh, Midnight Suns Nico. I like it a lot, lot better. I bought an Iron Fist like two weeks ago. I uh, sorry, an Iron Heart like two weeks ago. I'm keeping that. This Crossbones is pretty damn nice, but nowhere near as nice as this Crossbones. I just happened to open. Noir variants are absolute top tier. You, as you saw previous slides, I have two other great Deathlocks. I do not need a Chibi. Not spending on Pixels ever, although I would like a Ghost Spider upgrade. And Craven is my other real choice. Um, this is a glorious Craven, but I think it's fairly similar to the one on the left, um, which is one of my favorite variants. And I also have the cool Venomized one, and I have a Venomized Silk. So I can play Venomized Grave with Venomized Silk, and I like that little thematic thing, much like I like the uh, Jacinto, Carnage, and Venom. I am going to end up buying another Nico variant whenever this one comes out, because it's my absolute favorite. I just wanted to show it off again, like I will be immediately getting that Nico variant. I will spend the monies for it. All right, that's today's video. Please don't forget the following things. One, sub, comment, like, help us out. We appreciate you. We'll be doing our season pass giveaway for the next season starting next week. So if you're sub, you won't miss out. We've got our Wolverthor giveaway right now. Look for at Wolversnap on YouTube. You'll find him no problem. Promise. We've got Snap Judgment's podcast with Educated Collins and Call Me Sal coming out. I mean, soon. I'm probably just going to release it really soon. I think I'm ready for it to come out. And finally, lastly, we've got um another episode coming out later because ot yay all right hopefully that didn't convince you not to sub appreciate y'all see you later peace